this video is going to show you how to perform the calculations with gases when one variable changes and how it affects the other depending on if it's a direct relationship or an inverse relationship. So this is for the first experiment that you did where you blew up the balloon and we looked at the effect of amount represented as N on volume repre represented as V. This is a direct relationship. The more air you put into the balloon, the bigger it gets. So as N increases, volume increases. And the nature of a direct relationship is they increase or decrease by the same factor. So that means that if this doubles, this doubles. If this gets cut in half, this gets cut in half. That's how a direct relationship works. So there's a couple of calculations here to do. In this first one, we have a starting and a final amount. And we're going to calculate the final volume. So in this one, the amount goes from three to six puffs. So we need to know what factor that goes up by. And the way we can find that is by dividing the final by the initial. So six over three. So six puffs over three puffs equals a factor of two. This is how many times the volume is gonna change by. So effectively it's gonna double. So two times the volume 300 milliliters equals 600 milliliters. Now this was pretty easy because it ended up being a factor of two. Factors don't always end up being a nice even number. Sometimes they're decimals and that's what's happening in the next one. So in the next one it goes from 3 to 13.5. So this is increasing so we're still going to expect the volume to increase. However, the factor is not 2. So the way we found the factor previously was we took the final amount and divided it by the initial amount. So we're going to do the same thing here, except now we're going to need our calculator. So 13.5 puffs over 3 puffs equals 4.5. So 4.5 times 300 1350. So it went up. That's what we predicted. The predictions can help you to see if an answer makes sense or not. Alright, last one. This time it's going down. So it's starting at 10 and it's finishing at 6.25. So we need to know what factor it goes down by. So we're going to divide it in the same order. 6.25 over 10. So this is going to go down. So we're going to predict the volume to go down. So 6.25 over 10 equals, this is going to be a decimal. It's a smaller number over a bigger number. 0.625. Times the volume, 187.5. We predicted it, went, it would go down, and it did. It went from 300 to 187.5 milliliters. So that's for the first experiment. This is a direct relationship. You find the factor, and you simply multiply the starting uh, volume by that factor, and you get your answer. So if you do another experiment and you get a direct relationship, it's the same process. Okay, so this is one. This is for number two. This is for pressure and volume. So this is number two, pressure and volume. This is where you put the syringe on the pressure gauge and you change the volume. Now this relationship ended up being inverse. So what that means is if I decrease the volume, so if I make the gas smaller, it makes the pressure go up. And if you think about it, that's, a, that's pretty sensible. If you squeeze a gas, you can feel the pressure build. So now the, the nature of this is if I cut the volume in half, I double the pressure. If I double the volume, I cut the pressure in half. So for this inverse relationship, you simply take that factor that we just calculated, only now we're going to put it 
um, we're going to put 1 over that factor. So that's what we're going to do here. All right, so for this first one, we have the volume increasing. It's going from 10 to 20. The, let's see what the factor is in this case. So we find it the same way we did earlier. So 20 milliliters over 10 milliliters. That ends up being a factor of 2. But because it's an inverse relationship, what we have to do is put this on the bottom of the fraction. So it gets cut in half. So what we're going to predict is if this is going to go up, this is going to go down. So 1 half is 0.5 in your calculator times 101 kPa. And that equals 50.5. KPA. Okay, we predicted it would go down 101 to 50.5. Okay, the next one. So it's going from 10 to 13.9, so it's increasing. So we're going to predict that this is also going to decrease. So now we need to find the factor, just like we did, and then we need to put it on the bottom of the fraction. 13.9 over 10 milliliters equals... 1.39, and now we need to put it on the bottom, times 101. Okay, so 1.39 over 1. In your calculator, you have an inverse button. It says x to the minus 1. You can use that if you don't want to re-punch in the numbers again. So that number times 101 is 73, and that's with rounding. It's actually 72.66. All right, we predicted it would go down. So we started at 101, now we've got 73. That sounds like going down to me. KPA. Last one, 10 to 2.2, it's decreasing. So if that's decreasing, we're gonna predict that this is gonna increase. So our answer should be higher than 101. So same way, 2.2 over 10 milliliters equals 0.22 on the bottom. Now if you look at this number, you're going to take 1 over a decimal. That's going to be bigger, and that's going to multiply by the pressure, and that's going to make the pressure bigger. See how that works? So I'm just going to press my inverse button next to the minus 1 on my calculator. So you can see what I did here. 2.2 divided by 10 is 0.22. Now I want to put this on the bottom. So on the calculator, there's an inverse button. And it looks like that, x to the minus 1. So all I have to do is hit x to the minus 1 times 101 kPa. Oops. 459. Okay, so that goes there. 459. We said it was going to go up. It started at 101. It finished at 459. So that follows that our prediction. So now when you do the other experiments, number 3 and number 4, these relationships are going to end up being either direct or inverse. And although the relationship has different variables, it's going to follow the same process that we did for number one or number two, depending on what kind of relationship it is. So if that's what you end up getting for the relationship, just look back to what you did in either number one or number two and, it, and follow the same process.